Hello everyone and welcome to this guide where we will be covering all the essential features of an arms warrior in patch 9.1. And if you're looking for a one stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than skill capped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our upcoming world class course that will walk you through everything you need to know to bring your arms warrior gameplay up to the level of a pro. Once released in the coming weeks, you'll find videos on how to deal damage, how to set up kills and win games, and exactly how to execute your specs playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, SkillCap members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. Let's quickly discuss racials, which differ quite a bit depending on whether you play Horde or Alliance. If you're Horde, then the choice is clear, as Orc will be the best racial to pick from. The main reason is hardiness, reducing stun durations which will be useful against pretty much any composition, considering stuns are the pinnacle of how teams create kill windows. Blood Fury is also a nice addition, being quite strong in Shadowlands at giving you extra damage, which should be used during your Warbreaker windows. You could make other racials work, but nothing will be better than Orc for the Horde. As for Alliance, your choice can be more optional. Human is a no-brainer and a solid overall ladder choice, giving you the option to play with Relentless against long, drawn-out games or against teams with heavy, spammable crowd control. You could also opt to play with the Trinket as well, gaining double Trinket as a human warrior, which could be very handy against certain compositions where you need outs on stuns to survive heavy offensive setups from the enemy team. Having extra stats is also a nice bonus to have inside the arenas, increasing the value of the human racial. Outside of that, Gnome is also a powerful choice. There are plenty of root or heavy snare effects and being able to escape them, buying you more time is a strong tool for arms warriors to have. It's also unique in the fact that the racial doesn't share a cooldown with the medallion trinket, making it easy to use. With the increase of the new shackle trinkets, I could also see Dark Iron Dwarf becoming a real contender. Typically, you can trade your dwarf racial to remove the trinket's absorb effect, which could be highly valuable if this trinket will be as popular as the previous Maledict trinkets in BFA. If that's the case, then the dwarf racials will be seriously strong, being great against those trinkets, as well as being strong against assassination rogues and feral druids whom appear to be on the rise. Those are the main three racials you can pick if you're Alliance, having a nice variety of choices, picking whichever you fancy. Now we have racials covered, it's time to dwell into the talents an arms warrior takes. Most of these are pretty set in stone, with your base build looking something like this. Some talents are more situational, so we will get into them showing what talents you could utilize. Starting things off with row 15 and 25. These predominantly stay the same. Sudden Death is a nice chunk of extra burst damage to have, being exceptionally powerful in Arena, making it the go-to all the time. Storm Bolt is your only stun, making it crucial in many matchups, and I'd say is mandatory as well. Double Time could be used in niche situations, mainly in 2v2 games, where all you need is uptime to win and can trade an extra charge to increase the chances of you sticking to your target to land a kill. At row 30, things get a bit more situational, unless you're Venthyr, in which case you'll always be taking Massacre due to its great synergy with Condemn. In general, Massacre is excellent for killing potential due to the power of Execute, which has also been buffed for all other Covenants, making it even stronger in 9.1. However, if you're not playing Venthyr, then Rend can become a much more potent choice against classes that are high armored or durable in general. This is because Rend can be your form of pressure that bypasses armor, making you more of a threat against them. Here at row 35, realistically, you'll never be swapping from defensive stance, as this ability is too powerful for a warrior to lose out on, as it's vital for living in long or short games. In 2v2 games though, you could risk playing with Bounding Stride against teams where you need more uptime and if you're not taking any damage, but if the enemy team is smart, they can punish this. The choice at row 40 is not that impactful at all, but Warbreaker will be the main go-to talent, allowing you to spread your Colossus Smash debuff easily, which will be considerably helpful when bursting with Bladestorm. As for row 45, you'll mostly be sticking with Avatar as it gives you an extra powerful offensive cooldown as well as a root breaker making it ideal for arms warrior aggression. Lastly, we have the mighty talents at 50 with Dreadnought being the overall best choice. It gives a lot of extra pressure as well as scaling well with the Crash the Ramparts conduit, adding a lot of pressure passively and during burst damage. 
This can be swapped with anger management though, mainly against monks, warriors, and even rogues now to deal with disarm. Since disarm can match the cooldown of Warbreaker, if you play Dreadnought, you'll find no window to pop burst pressure during Warbreaker. But playing anger management, you'll have half of your Warbreaker windows occur when these classes don't have disarm ready, allowing you to get more burst damage off in these situations. Moving on to PvP talents, 9.1 had a couple of new ones which didn't really add too much, but overall, Arms Warriors have a strong amount of big PvP talents that you can utilize and change depending on the matchup. Sharpened Blade is one talent that you take nearly all the time, being a great offensive tool. It gives you extra pressure, but more importantly, you will use it to reduce incoming healing from the enemy team. This is great to use during your offensive cooldowns or to hinder healing effects such as Iron Bark or Healing Tide Totem. Storm Destruction is another offensive talent that can be great for added multi-target pressure and mobility. For Kyrian specifically, it's excellent as it will make it align with your Spear Bastion cooldown as well, making them go hand in hand for big pressure every minute. If you're playing Venthyr, then you'll notice that you'll be picking up Death Sentence nearly all the time, being a powerful gap closer. It has excellent synergy with Condemn, allowing you to keep up with other classes that would otherwise kite you too much, such as Hunters or Druids. You could pick this when playing other Covenants, but it won't be as effective compared to Venthyr. That covers all the offensive ones, which leaves Arms Warriors with a ton of defensive options when it comes to PvP talents. One of the most potent ones is Disarm, being excellent against most melee, used to negate pressure that they can deal. It can be used during an enemy melee's offensive cooldowns or setups to reduce the pressure they would otherwise create. In some situations, you could also use it offensively too, using it on warriors to deny their use of Die by the Sword or Death Knight to deny their death strikes could be an option if you're sure you can land a kill. War Banner is an excellent CC reduction cooldown, typically used defensively to survive offensive setups from the enemy team. This is common against rogue mage compositions or any composition that relies on heavy CC to take your team down. Duel can be a nice peeling talent against big offensive cooldowns that are used against your partners, reducing the pressure of them significantly. As such, you'll want to time using Duel well on enemy teams. The two downsides of Duel is that during it, your damage is weak against other targets, but more importantly, it effectively becomes a useless talent if you become the target, so make sure that you use it against teams that want to kill your partners and not yourself. So if you want another big defensive cooldown that works for yourself, then you could use Master and Commander instead. This allows you to have it more often in arena games, as well as increase the benefit of your rallying cry, making it more useful at surviving heavy pressure. Demolition got a rework at 9.1, which could make it a viable option against Mistweaver Monks or Disc Priest if you're trying to crush through big shields to deal significant damage. It can be a bit gimmicky and hard to pull off if the enemy team is aware, but if you do it, then it can deal a serious amount of extra damage. The only new PvP talent we got is Warbringer, which seems quite lackluster. It could potentially be used against Druids or Melee Cleaves, but to be honest, I'm not sure what I could replace it with, given that most of the other PvP talents seem to be much stronger. As you can see, that's a lot of PvP talents that you have access to as an arms warrior, so let's break it down a little bit. Sharpened Blade is used most of the time for extra pressure, only being taken off if you need this pressure in order to win games. Death Sentence is taken nearly all the time as Venther, increasing your mobility drastically. You could opt out for it against classes that can't kite you such as Shadow Priests to use a different PvP talent that would be more effective. Disarm should be taken against any melee that it's effective against. The two melee in which it does nothing against is Windwalker Monks and Feral Druids, so don't take it against them. The rest of the PvP talents will be more dependent on the setup you're against. Using the explanations previously explained will help you pick the most suitable option depending what you're facing. For instance, if I'm against an RMP, I would most likely pick up War Banner, using it to reduce heavy CC chains on my healer, which can help beat this composition. A widely discussed topic about Arms Warrior is their Covenant choice in the arena, so we will explain in detail the best choices and how they work well in different scenarios. In short, all four Covenants with an Arms Warrior are viable, with three Covenants proven to be rank 1 viable given the placements of Season 1 Shadowlands. That means that basically Night Fae is the weakest choice, even though it's still a viable choice to play at decent ratings. Aftershock can deal a serious amount of extra pressure, which could be excellent in compositions like Turbo Cleave. Necro Lord has become a very powerful option after Conqueror's Banner rework. It makes it a great choice mainly when playing 3v3 and with partners that can benefit a ton from it, such as Ret Paladins, Enhancement Shamans, even Shadow Priests, as it increases your burst pressure during offensive setups, as well as allows you and your partners to move freely. Being Necrolord will also bolster your self-healing a bit, having Fleshcraft and other soul binds which can make you survive a bit better. 
This one covenant being talked about the most is Kyrian due to its new legendary and soul binds, but we will get into that later. Spear of Bastion is a powerful ability, allowing players to have more uptime on targets as well as locking them down, being able to create offensive setups from it. This could help with other melee cleaves, which has particularly great synergy with Frost DKs, being able to grip people in with a blinding sleet, allowing you to easily land your Spear of Bastion. That being said, a handful of abilities can allow players to escape the Spear of Bastion's radius making it difficult to use on those classes, and you may need to wait for these spells to be used or simply choose another target. One class that can do that easily are Death Knights, using AMS or Death's Advance to escape the spear's radius easily. As such, you'll have to wait for the Death Knight to use these abilities so you can use it on them or simply choose a different kill target. Venthyr is probably the most popular covenant choice at the moment, which would also be a popular way to make your enemy team rage. Why is that? Well, simply put, Condemn plus Death Sentence equals OPOP. -OP. Being able to train targets and tunnel them down, not being able to be kited, is the biggest reason why Venthyr is still a dominant pick. Condemn is also a form of magic damage for warriors, which is highly valuable against high armored classes, being able to cut through them like butter. If I had to rank the Covenants in overall rankings for 2v2 and 3v3, it would look something like this. Bear in mind that all four Covenants are viable at high rating, so if you're a Raider or Mythic Plus player, wanting push arena rating as well, then you can still play Night Fae. Venthyr is still my overall number one choice as the power of Death Sentence with Condemn is absurd, making it useful in most situations. That being said, Kyrian is close to tying with it, most likely being just as powerful in 3v3 and slightly weaker in 2v2, depending on the meta of both brackets. Night Fae will be your weakest choice and Necrolord will be a powerful choice with melee cleaves or playing compositions based on winning with big offensive setups. Alright, that covers all the covenants, but what about the soul binds within these covenants? Let's dive into the best soul bind choices for each covenant. Up first, we have Kyrian, and with its new changes, Pelagos will be your overall best pick. Combat Meditation gives a serious boost during your Spear of Bastion usages, making it great for offensive pressure. File of Patience can also be a nice extra boost to your file, making it more impactful in games where you struggle to survive. Path of the Devoted also looks crazy powerful in Arena, giving you extra damage reduction as well as mobility, being a welcome sight for Arms Warriors. Forge Light could be a nice defensive option against melee, mainly rogues trying to take you down. Being able to pick up Sparkling, Drift Globe Core, or Soul Steel Clamps, increasing the odds of surviving setups on you where you are stunlocked. The Effusive Anima Accelerator seems like it could be very powerful as well, depending how reliable you can land your spear on multiple targets. As for Venthyr, Nadija will be your best offensive choice tree due to Thrill Seeker and Fatal Flaw being quite powerful soulbinds at increasing your pressure. Agent of Chaos makes your Door of Shadows a nice peeling ability, great against multiple targets, such as a Windwalker when they pop their Storm, Earth, and Fire. Familiar Predicaments can be excellent against heavy root teams, or even classes that have to apply snares often, such as an Arms Warrior. Dauntless Duelist could be used, though, when mainly on one target, increasing your pressure on them, as well as decreasing theirs on you. Nimble Step seems decent for peeling melee off you, whereas Sinful Preservation will only be good when playing with a Warlock, making your health stone increase in power. General Draven will be your best defensive choice as Venthyr. Service in Stone, Enduring Gloom, Hold Your Ground, Regenerative Skin, and Battlefield Presence are all soul binds that help increase your own self-survival. The Middle Row at Renown 29 and 31 also has three viable options, allowing you to pick the best option depending on the matchup. As Necrolord, Marileth will definitely be your best choice, with Kevin's Oozling seemingly looking like it will help dramatically during your banner setups. Ooze's frictionless coating while nerfed is still a powerful soulbind to have, increasing your self-healing. Ultimate form also makes your fleshcraft more powerful, giving you the potential to outplay crowd control mechanics as well, making it highly skillful and valuable to use. Lastly, if you do venture as a Night Fae arms warrior, then Dreamweaver is going to be your most favorite. Pod Tender has a chance to be a lifesaver, making it excellent if it actually works out for you. Soothing Voice is also a nice soul bind at being disruptive, which can proc quite often for an arms warrior. Waking Dreams looks like an extra bonus of self-survival, which is always nice to have. We can't talk about soul binds without talking about conduit choices, so let's get into the best conduits you should use as an arms warrior. Potency conduits are super strong for arms warrior, gaining a lot of extra pressure through them. Your best potency conduit will be Mortal Combo, as it can not only add to passive pressure, but to your burst as well. It can copy buffed versions of Mortal Strike, making it superior to any other potency conduit for an arms warrior. 
Crash the Ramparts will be your second best option, bolstering your passive pressure as an arms warrior. It also buffs Dreadnought damage from your normal talents, as well as being easy to obtain from the PvP vendor, making this your second best overall choice. Your third best potency conduit will come in the form of all the Covenant bound potency conduits apart from Venthyr. This means destructive reverberations for Night Fae, Veteran's Repute for Necrolord, and Piercing Verdict for Kyrian. For Venthyr, this option is weak, however. Ashen Juggernaut is a much stronger option, making it excellent for Venthyr warriors chasing for big condemned crits. On to Finesse Conduits. These are also quite strong for an arms warrior to obtain. Safeguard is your overall most powerful and useful, increasing the strength of your intervene, making it useful at peeling extra pressure against your partners. Disturb the Peace is an excellent conduit for keeping up to targets or kiting them better, reducing your piercing howl cooldown significantly. Lastly, Inspiring Presence will be your third best option, increasing in strength when playing with the PvP Talent Master and Commander. It will be a nice lifesaver, which could make the difference against heavy burst teams if needing a bit more survival. Endurance is the weaker conduit choices of the other two, however, there's still a couple of good options. Stalwart Guardian is by far your best endurance conduit, reducing the cooldown of your die by the sword significantly. This makes it more powerful, being able to use it more often, especially against teams that have multiple offensive pressure points. The new Condensed Animosphere is your second best option, giving you self-healing when being targeted as a warrior, which is a very welcome sight. If you have to use a third Endurance Conduit, then Brutal Vitality is a decent choice, giving you a tiny bit of extra absorption, but it's definitely weaker than the other two choices. As shown before, this is what your optimal talent trees should look like, given that you can swap trees and row choices in the start of arena games. This will be the go-to for Kyrian, giving you the option to change the first two rows or having the choice between safeguard and extra self-healing. Forge Light will be used for more defense, mainly against rogues, allowing you to swap the last two rows or middle rows if needed. Again, for Venthyr, Nadja is typically the offensive choice, with Draven being the better defensive option. You can swap to Dauntless Duelist for Nadja when wanting more single target pressure and don't need the CC reduction from familiar predicaments. Draven has an excellent middle tier option, which can be swapped depending on what you're facing. When playing Necrolord, Mareleth is your main choice. The rows are more staple, but you have the option of picking Safeguard or Brutal Vitality, depending on who's the main kill target in your team. The last two rows can be optional, but most of the time, you will probably stick with Viscous Trail. Dreamweaver will definitely be your main choice as Night Fae, having stronger aggression and survivability with this tree's powerful soulbinds. Most rows won't be changed often, with the exception of the first row, changing it depending on who's taking more damage, you or your teammates. Starting off Season 2 of Shadowlands, it's important to know how to gear your arms warrior in order to increase the chances of you winning, whether it's common or uncommon circumstances. Up first, you have your stat priority, which has changed somewhat. Strength, stamina, and versatility will remain your biggest priorities due to the power they provide in all PvP circumstances. The two set bonus from PvP trinkets makes versatility well worth it, even going over the 30% threshold as it still gives you more damage and survivability, being vital for an arms warrior. Then you should be looking to get as much critical strike as possible. Even though crit damage is only 175% in PvP, it's still a valuable stat and makes it worth getting as having big unsuspecting critical strikes on your buffed mortal strike or executes can have a serious impact on the game. It also makes rage generation from your auto attack stronger, being a valuable resource for an arms warrior. Haste would be the next choice, which doesn't really give too much value. The benefit of having 20% haste is to have an extra GCD during Colossus Smash, which is is most likely to be peeled, making it less warranted in PvP scenarios. As such, it's not really worth having at the moment until maybe next season's gear, when stats increases even more. This means you should try to avoid mastery, although it's not a bad stat in general. All stats for an arms warrior work well, but critical strike will be valued higher after versatility. Knowing the stat prioritization will make buying conquest gear from the vendor quite an easy task. The first priority, however, will be saving up for a big juicy two-handed weapon as the first piece to buy. Arms warrior damage is all based on weapon damage, so having a stronger weapon will mean having stronger damage with every global you press. As such, I'd say it's vital to try and get this as soon as possible. After that, you can buy whichever pieces you fancy, trying to maximize the conquest points per week that you gain, picking up on versatility and critical strike pieces, which there are a ton of. Make sure to always check your vault before you make your weekly purchases, trying to choose high conquest point costing pieces, or of course getting a weapon if you're lucky to receive one. 
Moving on to trinket choices. Options have opened up now that the emblem trinket has been nerfed quite strongly. This trinket has changed from pretty much being a strong defensive cooldown into a trinket that can help survive, which will still be good into heavy burst compositions such as Rogue Mage if needing to survive big burst damage. That means damaging trinkets have become much more potent, with the badge trinket being the best one to use. It gives critical strike, being a favorable stat, as well as being able to use it during offensive cooldowns. Kyrian can benefit even more from it, being able to use the badge with every spear bastion, increasing these offensive setups. The new Maledict Trinket can also be a contender depending on what you face and play, as it can be hard for an arms warrior to set up by yourself given that you can't bait out decurses. It's definitely strong in teams that don't have decurses and struggle to have defensive cooldowns to be effective against it. It goes without saying that the Medallion Trinket will be a mandatory trinket to have as every race, even being good for human racials depending on the matchup. Being able to trinket to help you or your teammates to survive, or even being able to trinket to land kills, is a vital part of the game, which is why having the Medallion is essential. That being said, most of the time as an Arms Warrior, you will probably be using your trinket for defensive purposes, whether it be for a clutch intervene, fear, or rallying cry. Most of the time, your trinket is probably used to help your team live. Arms Warriors have a bunch of strong legendaries that can be used and swapped around depending on the matchups you find yourself in. As a Venthyr Arms Warrior, Exploiter will still be your best choice, increasing your passive pressure as well as being able to create monstrous burst pressure with this legendary. You'll probably want to max out this legendary first, given that you can use it in every game to increase your damage. Other Covenants will usually be using Battle Lord, being their greatest passive and burst damage increase. The more uptime you have, the more you can make out of this legendary, being an excellent way to increase your damage output. A utility legendary that could be used is Misshapen Mirror, being excellent against casters or heavy magic crowd control or damage. It can be a nice defensive option in matchups where the pressure isn't needed and you can focus more on living. The Leaper Legendary is a very niche pick for Warriors, but it can be a decent option when facing teams where you just need uptime in order to win. Typically, I take this against Affliction Warlocks when I'm not Venthyr in order to have a bit better uptime on them. The new Covenant Legendaries are particularly looking great for Kyrian and Necrolord. Elysian Might for Kyrian looks incredibly powerful, locking down targets for a longer amount of time, as well as increasing your crit damage you deal to targets by a ton, making this your new go-to legendary. Glory for Necrolord is quite different. It's great for you, but more so a team-based legendary to increase the longevity of your Conqueror's banner. As such, you may not use this all the time, but it can be great for your partners depending on the composition you play. Having your character geared up with the best build you have possible leaves you with one final step to take before entering the arena, which is to have essential macros. The biggest ones to have are focus, as being able to use focus macros for certain abilities will be vital in any arena game. As an arms warrior, I'd encourage you to have this on your disarm, charge, duel, intimidating shout, hamstring, pummel, and storm bolt to make your arena game a bit easier. Intervene macros are important as well as you want to use this ability on demand and on the right target making it extremely powerful in most circumstances i suggest you use either party one and two macros or name macros setting up two different intervene bindings for your dps and your healer in 3v3 games the choice is up to your personal preference at either remaking names or having control of party one and party two in your group another important macro to have is a cancel bladestorm macro you can choose to have one binding for it or applying this macro in important abilities that you'd want to cancel your bladestorm for an example could be on your pummel, in which case you'd want to make a macro that looks something like this. While it can be quite tedious doing this on a bunch of abilities, it's still worth having if it will make you press your abilities on demand and not be too late on them. Bear in mind that while bladestorming, you can use a handful of abilities while bladestorm is active. These are Ignore Pain, Berserker Rage, Rallying Cry, Defensive Stance, Die by the Sword, and Spell Reflection. That covers all the essentials of playing an Arms Warrior 9.1. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.